first I want to take some beef broth and we're just going to put this over here into the instant pot three quarters to an inch deep that's all you need now what I'm going to season this beef broth with is Perans that's made by the oyster bed company and let me tell you it just screams Louisiana flavors this stuff is really good it, it was kind of uh, designed out of wanting to season up or make a compound butter but I have found out that it's a very good seasoning a lot of things this will also go into the gravy for just man out of this world gravy so what I'm gonna do is just take and I'm eyeballing this for the most part I just want to put about a tablespoon of this in the beef broth about right there that's it that's all we need and the beauty of a pressure cooker like this instant pot is that it really flavors the meat you know it just drives that flavor into it and just so you know a lot of your more popular your uh, places there in New Orleans that do the famous New Orleans po' boys they actually boil their meat they boil it with no seasonings they let the gravy do all the seasoning after they mix the meat into the gravy and i've done that as well very old video on my channel somewhere i i show you exactly how to do that but this i'm taking a little bit different approach we are using an instant pot or pressure cooker and we're going to get to super tender in about an hour and 10 minutes drive that flavor into it all right so we're just going to take this chuck roast out of here now you can cut this in half if you want to but i don't see no need we're just going to lay that right in the bottom just like that all right so we're going to go to pressure cook on this let's hit cancel go to pressure cook and we want to go to uh hour and 10 minutes okay once this gets up to pressure, then it will start counting down from the hour and 10 minutes until it's done. So we'll see you back here in about an hour and 10 minutes. So I'll let this go an hour and 10 minutes. I pulled the top off after decompressing it naturally, which lasted about 20 minutes. And to me, the meat wasn't quite tender enough. So put the lid back on one an additional 20 minutes. So that's where we're at now. And I have let this decompress naturally. So we're just gonna relieve this remaining pressure off of here. We're gonna take a look and see where the meat's at. All right, pressure is released. Let's go ahead and get our lid off of here. Oh boy, I'm smelling roast. And speaking of that, if this was a pot roast, you know, most people would sear this on both sides, add a little flour for a gravy or whatever. This is not pot roast. So didn't bother with browning this. We're not worried about adding color to it. We're strictly wanting good tender beef. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Falling apart. Let's take this. Transfer all this into this. Oh my goodness, that is just fall apart tender. That's exactly what I'm wanting. Super tender. All right, so I'm gonna get all the meat in this and I'm gonna get my wife to help me out and get her to shred this once it cools off a little bit. And uh, I'm probably gonna strain this stock out of here that we cooked this in. And we're going to use that in making the gravy. So we are getting ready to make this gravy. And like I told you earlier, I'm using the Parans seasoning from the oyster bed. Speaking of oyster bed, they've got a brand new product out. Let me introduce you to the Piro. South Louisiana Piro's, you know, the little canoe that was carved out of trees and such as that. It's a uh, <laughs> very cool idea. And I love this. You can cook with these just like I'm doing here. It's on a little stove top. They conduct heat very well with this specialty alloy that they use. Very similar in characteristics to cast iron, except it, it won't rust. And uh, it's easy to clean and it's lightweight. It's uh, seven, over 17 inches this way, over eight inches this way, three and a half inches deep, holds over three quarts. And it's a cooking vessel 
or you can use it strictly for like display of food, you know, for aesthetic reasons and such as that. And some of you might remember previous videos that I've done through the oyster bed, uh, the original oyster beds that started this company. I've done my version of like the Oysters Rockefeller. I have done Bloody Mary oysters. I've done a lot of stuff off camera. They also have what they call a steak bed where you can actually cook your steak on this platter. It renders all the juice or compound butter that you add to that steak and you can serve it in the same platter. The platter retains heat, which means you're gonna get your steak nice and warm. So check them out. I'll have a link in the description box. All right, so I'm going in with a whole stick of butter, which is four ounces or a half a cup. Just going to melt that in. Our butter is melted. I'm just going to take some regular all-purpose flour. Going to go in with about a tablespoon and a half and maybe another tablespoon. I'm going to start with that. Now with me, it's more of an eyeball thing. Normally, it's... Uh, however much fat you use in this case butter you put that much flour some people will put a little less flour and uh really doesn't matter i go by looks more than anything and i can tell already i need more flour so i'll show you what i'm looking for here i'm not measuring anything people i cook like grandma did that's looking pretty good right there. I'm gonna drop my heat down to a medium and I just wanna constantly stir this just like making any other roux and I'm looking for kind of a, I'll show you, but more of a light brown gravy. I don't want it real dark, but I do wanna cook that flour taste out of this flour and that's only achieved by letting it cook. All right, that is the color gravy that I'm looking for. I'm gonna take a little plastic cup here. Oh, what is that, a Dixie cup? That's a red Solo cup, man. Red Solo cup, there you we go. that red Solo cup. I'm just gonna take some of this broth. Woo, woo. Yeah, buddy. All right, we're gonna turn this heat down a little bit. And this stuff is already starting to thicken. And we're just gonna keep adding this broth until we get this about the thickness or thinness that we want. All right, now at this point, this is where I wanna season this. Oh, that looks good. That is good gravy. So I'm gonna take this parans, parans, parans. We're gonna go in, that's about a teaspoon there. This stuff is so good, y'all. About a teaspoon there, about two teaspoons. Really good. Oh, it's incredible. It's got that real Louisiana flavor. They did a lot of work, I think a year and a half, two years making this and perfecting it. And they, they've got it, man. They totally nailed it. All right, we're gonna cut this heat down between low and medium. That's all we need. We're gonna go in with this meat. Oh man, can y'all see where I'm going with this? Very quick, very easy. I've got some French bread from the Leidenheimer Company straight out of New Orleans. This is real New Orleans French bread. I've got some mayo going on. And from there, we're gonna take some of our roast beef and gravy. Put us a nice little layer here on the bottom. Got a little bit of shredded lettuce. Got a few Roma tomatoes. Look for some uh, regular tomatoes they were not very red so i end up going with aroma and that looks fine to me now you can salt and pepper this lettuce and tomato if you want to i'm just going to dive in just like it is here oh that smells good man that bread alone smells fantastic all right let's just dive in and see now look this little roll that he's using showing that 
that is also made by the Leidenheimer company right there in New Orleans. It's just like a little slider roll. It's French bread. Same thing this is made out of, but small. And uh, he has nothing but the roast beef and gravy on his. He does not like lettuce and tomatoes. So, hey, each to his own. Let's dive in. Mmm. Oh no, I got I have a second bite now. Oh my goodness. You like it? Man, that's delicious. Let me tell you something. I've been going to New Orleans since I was knee high to a grasshopper, mm. thanks to them. We'd go every year when I was growing up for Mardi Gras and all. Oh yeah. Had family over there and that tastes just like what you get down in the French Quarter all day long. Pretty darn close. I mean, that is delicious. Come get you a taste of New Orleans. I'm Russ Jones. I'm Derek Jones. From the Smoky Riz Barbecue. Mmm. I'll tell you what, that right there, you can't beat that. 